good evening and uh, welcome to video number 321 in this lecture i am going to explain the difference between stationary and non stationary time series that are used in econometrics and uh, in this particular lecture i am focusing on its theory part and in the coming videos uh, i'll uh, use uh, uh, some software uh, to test for stationarity and uh, things like that my dear subscribers if you are students of economics you might have experienced that most microeconomic variables are non stationary in nature but uh, many of these series uh, can be stationarized uh, by taking the first difference or the second difference uh, but the literature shows that uh, majority of the non stationary series may be uh, may become stationary uh, by taking the first difference in economics most variables have stable long run relationships for example consumption and income prices and wages similarly uh, prices at home and uh, prices in other countries and we can use the unit root testing techniques to identify variables which have long run stable relationship with one another now let us define what do you mean by stationarity think of a time series yt at time t then that series yt will be stationary if number 1 expected value of yt is equal to mu number 2 if the variance of uh, the series yt is equal to sigma square and third if the covariance of yt and yt plus s is equal to covariance of yt and uh, yt minus s and that is equal to gamma s uh, we may use a dicke fuller test and it has three versions the first one is with no constant and uh, no trend so if there is no constant and no trend then yt can be thought of as equal to rho yt minus 1 plus vt and uh, if we subtract yt minus 1 from both sides of equation then we have yt minus yt minus 1 is equal to rho yt minus 1 minus yt minus 1 plus vt and finally uh, we can show that uh, change in yt is equal to rho minus 1 into yt minus 1 plus vt and finally we can uh, uh, use gamma instead of rho minus 1 uh, times yt minus 1 plus yt so this is the um, um, this is equal to the difference between yt and yt minus 1 that is change in yt so this is just like taking the first difference so if there is no constant and no trend then uh, using the dicke fuller test the null hypothesis is either rho is equal to 1 or alternatively saying gamma is equal to 0 and the alternative would be that rho is uh, less than 1 and alternatively h1 is that uh, gamma is less than 0 so this is the easier way to test the hypothesis about rho uh, we may remember that the null hypothesis regarding the dicke fuller test is that uh, the station the the series is non station that is there is a unit root if there is a constant but no trend then the equation becomes delta yt is equal to alpha plus uh, gamma yt minus 1 plus vt and uh, if there is constant as well as the trend then the third version of the dicke fuller test can be used and in that change in yt or delta yt is equal to alpha plus gamma yt minus 1 plus lambda t plus vt so in this equation both the constant and the trend term are included now what are the uh, testing procedure uh, first of all we will plot the time series of the original observation on the variable if the series appears to be wandering are fluctuating around a sample average of 0 we will use version 1 with no constant and no trend if the series appears to be wandering or fluctuating around a sample average 
which is non-zero, then we will use version two. That is, uh, we will uh, use the second version with constant but not trend. And uh, if the series appears to be wandering or fluctuating around a linear trend, then we will use version three. That is, it will include both constant and uh, trend. And uh, these are the various uh, critical values for the Dickey Fuller test uh, for uh, no constant, no trend. The critical value for the 99% confidence interval or 1% level of significance is minus 2.56, and with with constant it is minus 3.43, and with both constant and trend. The critical value for the 1% level of significance is minus 3.96. However, the standard critical value for the 1% level of significance is minus 2.33. For 5%, it is minus 1.65, and for 10%, it is minus 1.28. Now, a question is: What is a stationary time series? As I mentioned earlier, a stationary series is a variable with constant mean. Over time, that is, expected value of y t is equal to mu. Similarly, it is a series or a variable with a constant variance across time, that is, variance of y t is equal to sigma square. And uh, thirdly, it is a series uh, with a constant covariance across time, that is, covariance of y t and y t plus one is equal to covariance of y t and y t minus one, and that. Is equal to gamma s. So the covariance depends upon the length of time between t and uh, s. These are some of the examples of non-stationary non time series. So if you look at these series, uh, there are some type of uh, trends in some of the series, but they are non-stationary. You see, there are fluctuation, uh, but uh, they are not fluctuating around. Uh, A zero mean or uh, some non-zero mean, so these are non-stationary. They have some type of uh, trend. Now, what would be the nature of a stationary time series as opposed to non-stationary time series? So we can also look at uh, some other examples, and these are the examples of stationary time series. If you look at all these series, there are fluctuations um, of values uh, around a zero mean. In all these, they are fluctuating uh, up and down um, around this zero mean. And if you look at these, uh, we have uh, removed the trend uh, from the data, and they are stationary over time. Establishment of stationarity using differencing of integrated series. Uh, let us suppose if A series y t is integrated of order one, then it is equal to z t, where z t is the first difference between y t and y t minus one, and that new series or the difference between y t minus y t minus one is stationary. If y t is a uh, integrated of order two, then the difference Is equal to z t, and that is equal to y t minus y t minus one minus y t minus y t minus two is stationary. So, in case of uh, the integration of order one, the series is uh, stationary at the first difference. If a series is integrated of order two, then it is stationary at the second difference. Uh, these are some of the uh, various types of uh, Unit root test that we can use for uh, checking stationarity of time series. Uh, we may use Dickey Fuller test, and then there is augmented Dickey Fuller test, which is improvement over the simple Dickey Fuller test. Then we have Phillips-Perron unit root test. We have Dickey Pantula unit root test. We have GLS transform Dickey Fuller test. We have ERS point optimal test. We have KPSS unit root test, and uh, we have NG and uh, Perron uh, test. These are various uh, types of uh, Uh, unit uh, or stationarity uh, tests, which we can use for uh, investigating or checking stationarity of uh, time series data. It is, in gentlemen, this was a brief discussion, a theoretical, a brief theoretical discussion about uh, stationary and uh, non-stationary series. 
uh, i hope uh, this was uh, helpful for you and uh, if you if it is helpful for you kindly do subscribe to the channel and do not forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get latest information about my other videos that uh, i will upload for you i thank you very much for watching this video see you soon in another video thank